Hello everyone, welcome to Chargers TV. Uh, round four of the SEABL concluded over the weekend as your Hobart Chargers took on the Sandtrain Sabres here at home at the Doon Entertainment Centre and let's have a look at the, the results for you now. In the women's game, it was the Sandtrain Sabres getting up in this one, 97 to 90, a much better improvement by the ladies team and the top scorers for Sandtrain were Rachel Cherry once again dominating uh, with 30 points and 10 rebounds, Jessica Bye. 21 points uh, also for your very own Telstra Hobart Chargers Kathleen Shearer had 25 points and 11 rebounds a great double double by her and Brittany Smart 25 points and also adding in with six rebounds let's hear from the coaches now as we got their post game reaction uh, you'll hear from Dwayne Davey and Jonathan Goodman yeah look very proud of the girls for, for their response I guess last week the same team wiped us off the court. Uh, you know, we gave up 100 points and, and lost by 32 or, or whatever it was. So the girls really responded tonight and, and came out and, and showed our fans that we're, we're serious about what we're here for. And, um, you know, they played really hard, I guess. Um, you know, we played a heck of a team. Uh, I think they shot 62% from the floor or something for, for the game. So, um, you know, that's not going to happen very often, but it's, they're just a really good, really good and really deep team that just had multiple options at all times on the floor. So, and I mean, a player like Rachel Jarry, two-time Olympian, um, you know, that's, that's a pretty special player out there that we had to deal with tonight. And, you know, for parts, we did a really good job. Other parts, she was just too smart and then adjusted and, and really made us pay. So, um, you know, disappointed with the loss, but absolutely uh, pleased with, uh, yeah, with the effort and, and I guess the, the response after last week's effort. Yeah. You know, Thompson going off for 20. Um, you know, Smart had 25. She's a quality athlete. She had 25. You know, that, that, that's going to be a tough ball game to win. Um, you know, we were fortunate that we had some solid scorers. Um, but we need to do better. You look at the stat line, we had more turnovers. Uh, Hobart out-rebounded us. Um, we're not going to win too many basketball games with that sort of going on. So we've got to be better. So was it the, the effort that you were looking for? Obviously Hobart brought a bit more effort than what they did last week. Yeah, yeah no, I, I thought we got out-competed. I thought Hobart mm. totally out-competed us and that was disappointing. Um, we knew that that wasn't going to be the same Hobart team, yeah. you know, even with Clara out. And that's sometimes a danger because teams play differently and other people step up. And I thought Thompson did that. Um, you know, it was really hard for us. And it was going to be hard in front of their home crowd because you guys put on such a great game night. Um, we just needed to be better and we weren't ready for it. So both coaches there with their reactions and thoughts. I'm now going to bring in my co-host, Justin Bryan, into the show now. And, of course, Justin, uh, certainly Hobart with that improvement from, from last week into this weekend. But um, Rachel Cherry and the Sabres were a big factor. Massive factor. Again, you mentioned Rachel. Rachel had uh, 30 points, another big game for her. And I think one thing that certainly proved to them was probably Clara's injury was a little... Unexpected for us last week, but certainly had the young ones stepping up. One thing Dwayne talked about last week was that slow start. We certainly avoided the slow start again this week, which was great. Um, you know, really got out into the attack, even led in the first quarter, which was, you know, great for us. Uh, the second and third quarters let us down a little bit. Was sort of annoying to sort of see a lack of rotation occasionally out to shooters um, and maybe even some minor structure failures, maybe whether that's communication on D, not mm. too sure. But in general, really good positive signs. Uh, only going down by a tight margin, but nonetheless, uh, good positive signs coming out of the game. And of course, now Hobart faced Geelong on Sunday here at the Durban Entertainment Centre and we'll throw to Dwayne now to get his thoughts going into Sunday's game. Absolutely, tough ask and you know there's no easy games in the Seabull anymore. I think the, the league's definitely gotten stronger. Um, every team's you know gotten better and and it's a battle for us to compete you know on a weekly basis but you know as I keep saying I've got absolutely uh, full faith in the group that we've got to, to compete with those teams and um, you know if we can we, if we can string together a good four quarters of basketball we, we can beat anyone so I'm um, definitely confident. Dwayne Davey with his thoughts there going into Sunday's game against Geelong. And of course, Justin, Geelong are the reigning champs in the Siebel for the women's competition. This is going to be a hell of a tough game for the ladies. You're not wrong there, particularly now that we're struggling with potential injury worries. Again, we've already mentioned Clara. Kathleen going down late in the game with what many look to be a really bad uh, knee ankle injury. Fortunately, she came out. Uh, not long just before the uh, final siren there, showing some positives. A little bit of a limp, but probably nothing she can't deal with. 
Uh, again, she should have probably been the MVP last year. Was Defensive Player of the Year. She's a high-tier player all across the country, let alone the Siebel. So someone like her will be of great bonus. But, I mean, someone like a Brit Smart who we've seen, she was really stepping up and really playing her role and having someone like Ashana, who I believe was third in scoring. So we have that depth and that ability. It's just going to be, again, those key rotations on defence, getting out the shooters and maintaining that structure that's going to give Hobart the win this week. And, of course, that game is at 12 o'clock uh, this Sunday at the Doan Entertainment Centre. And now to the men's game, where the men got a big win this time round against Santram. 104-80 to 80 was the scoreline uh, for Santram. It was Alistair McDonald with 18 points and was 80% from the three-point line. Some great shooting there. And for your very own Telstra Hobart Chargers, Craig Moller. 27 points and 20 rebounds, had a phenomenal effort. And, of course, our man, Mafang Muo, with 24 points and 8 rebounds. And you're going to hear from Mafang now to get his post-game thoughts. Yeah, it's definitely a great confident builder. I mean, we want to come home and get our, our first home win since, since what happened two weeks ago. And we just want to keep building on it for the next five games. So hopefully we can keep it going. Next week we got a tough one, so we got to come out hard and during the week practicing and just go at it and come out and just get another win and keep it going. We'll touch on next week in a second, but obviously, um, you know, last week was back and forth. There was like big shot after big shot, but tonight you just blew them out the water in that second half. I mean, that, we came in with a mindset that we can't let what happened last week happen again. So we came in to go from the get-go, play as hard as we can, and, and offensively just just push and attack defensively, get a few three or four stops in a row and just let it, let everything happen, you know what I mean? Yeah. At, at times during the game, I know Craig was really trying to get you guys to really crash on the boards. At yeah. times, was that kind of a big thing to, yeah, to focus I mean, on? Yeah, the first quarter there, our rebound, they got a lot of offensive rebounds, so we came out and we said, you know, we can't let that happen, so we got to box him out and just go crash the board as hard as we can. Not just one person, not only Craig, but everybody. So we came out and just trying to stop him from getting a rebound. That's what kept him in the game in the first half, actually. So Mafang Muo there with his thoughts from the game. And Justin, he's very happy with his side's performance in the game against Antrim. Absolutely. Uh, you mentioned a back and forward tussle. We were never actually headed in that entire game. I was reading a few reports and checked over the score. Mm. At no point did Hobart actually... Uh, have a deficit to make up in this game which was great to see. Firing all cylinders uh, from the first offensive possession the crowd was up and about which was great to see and again yeah, the entire team's performance was outstanding young guys coming in making an impact the big three that we have mentioned for the mm. last few weeks all scored in 20 points. Uh, Trey also had 20 points. I think he shot uh, almost over 70% shooting so he played well. Mathang picked up in the second half after a hot cold start uh, and Craig was absolutely monstrous on both ends of the floor. Had 20 rebounds. I believe seven of those were offensive, so really playing his part on both ends of the floor. They just really clicked and they really played well. It's something that Hobart really needed. A really key victory. Again, Trey treated it like a two-game series. They got that sweep. That's what they wanted, so hell of a lot of momentum going into this week. And of course, Justin, great to see we're about three or so minutes to go in the game. Stewie getting all the youngsters on and giving them some valuable court time. Absolutely. This is something that the North West did a few weeks ago when we'd blown them out, we returned the favour and I believe our crowd was just as strong if not stronger than the reception that those Thunder boys got, I mean you had young guys like Elijah Pawson on there uh, you had a Jack Stanwix on there, you had Lockie Boucher on there, Geordie Hargrave, all those guys I believe Liam Smith as yes. well, yes. he was out there and it was just really good to see the future of the club, really athletic um, they weren't af afraid to take on the, the Sabres team, they had a lot of senior heads out there, uh, really calm, cool, collected really brought the fans to their feet and certainly a highlight of the night for me. Uh, Absolutely. And now, of course, Hobart take on Geelong this Sunday at the deck at 2 o'clock. And we asked Mafang that how big the rivalry is against Geelong. Here's his thoughts. Oh, definitely. I mean, that's one of the top teams in the league in the last few five to six years. And every year they've got a strong team. So next week we definitely got to come out with a different mentality, different game plan. We just got to come out and play as hard as we can, 10 times harder than today. So if we do that, everything will fall in place and we get the home, home court advantage and win. But if we don't, then it's going to be a long night. So, Justin, Mafang, very optimistic on Sunday against Geelong. Absolutely. I mean, the team is firing on all cylinders, so there's all the reason in the world to be confident. A big three scoring, we're playing good defence, we're rotating, we're being accountable, and again, we're including these young guys. So we're not sitting as a team that's a starting lineup or, you know, a big four. You know, we've got a team that's going eight deep, nine deep, as Trey has talked about previously. 
uh, that is a facilitator for him and even the guys you know like a Terry that facilitate mm. it's a bonus to them to know that they've got a whole team to work with Geelong are a strong side always a good side uh, always a side that re- usually travels well something that Sandringham did as well travelled fairly deep uh, I think the fact that the decks become a fortress and a must win game away from home for a lot of teams means that these teams are going to travel deep so again you're going to get top quality basketball at the deck you're not going to get you know seven or eight of their best players and uh, you know we might get a win yeah. these are tough games these are challenging games they're must win games and I reckon we can get the win on Sunday and of course game is at 2 o'clock this Sunday afternoon at the DEC we'll take a break and we'll come back with more right after this And welcome back. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube to keep up to date with all the goings on here at the Hobart Chargers. And of course, just before we go, our special guest this week is Taylor Mole. We caught up with Taylor and spoke to her about her time at the AIS at the moment and how excited she is about going to Colorado State later in the year to play in the NCAA Women's Comp. That's all we have time for in this edition of Chargers TV. On behalf of the entire crew, it's goodbye. Um, so going into my second year there, it's just been basically a dream come true, having been offered the scholarship there. And just thanks to all the coaches, I guess, from who've coached me ever since I was a little girl and coming here. So it's just kind of um, shaped my career to where it is now. And it's just um, a bit of a blessing to be there now. How are you finding the adjustment from, say, basketball here in this state compared to, like, basketball in the ACT and then also when you play with the Institute as well too, like going to other places and other countries around the world? Um, I'd say the basketball, since going to the AIS and then playing internationally, it's just a lot faster and more physical and the training sessions are definitely a lot more um, strenuous, longer, and they're definitely a lot more physical. So I guess that was a little bit hard to adjust to at the start, but then... um, being in my second year there now and playing Siebel, it's definitely become more of a become more normal for me. And of course, you're under uh, Christian Veal, former WNBL player for for Canberra. And how are you finding um, the coaching range under under Christian? Um, she's probably one of the best coaches I've I've ever had. So she's, she's just gets all the players since she was a player youngest player to ever play WNBA opal so she just just teaches us something new every single day and it's just having her there whenever we want to talk to her is just amazing and what's the culture like at, at the AIS obviously you're you're staying there and studying there now what's the culture within the group there we're definitely all close I guess because we live together that's definitely a bigger factor that makes us closer but our culture is a massive part of what we do and how we train and it's just we're definitely all really connected and that shows in the way we play in Siebel and shows how we play, that sort of thing. Is there a part of you that misses home a little bit? Um, I get, there always will be a part that misses home, but knowing that I'm there doing something, um, playing basketball, it's obviously uh, get one bad thing moving away from home, but get an even better thing having this opportunity. Obviously the big news we've heard in the past month or so is basically that you um, accepted and, and signed with Colorado State in the NCAA women. How is that to get a scholarship there and be going to the States in a few months' time? Very exciting. It's been a pretty long process um, with the recruiting and stuff like that. But to have it all sorted now and to be officially committed, sign my NLI, it's just very, very excited to get over there. And did you have any other offers from college and, and that type of thing? Any other schools were interested? Yeah, I had um, a heap of other schools that were interested and a few other offers. But after the visit to Colorado State, it was a pretty obvious t- decision for myself and my family. Just um, the feel, like the coaches and the facilities, it was just pretty obvious being over there and committing um, at the college. So it was a very nice decision to have, though. And what are you expecting there? Are you expecting anything different compared here to Australia? Um, I think the style of play will be a little bit different just because it's American style, but it's all basketball, I guess, so I'll just have to bring my game and um, bring as much as I can to the program and the Mountain West tournament and then just see what happens from day one. And obviously you committed there for, is it the four years there? Yep, four years scholarship. And of course, obviously, after that four years, where would you like to be in four years' time? Um, I mean, if I'm good enough after the four years, it'd be great to have a go on the WNBA draft. But then coming back, um, hopefully being an Opal in the future, playing WNBL overseas in Europe, kind of anything, but playing professionally would be nice. Would you like to say maybe later on in your career, like we, 
the news during the week about Andrew Bogart finishing his career here with Sid in Sydney. Would you like to do something similar maybe one day and finish here in Hobart in the Seabull? I think that would be pretty special coming back and playing in my hometown for one of my years. So that's definitely something that's in the back of my mind for the future.